Jacob, we're about to start. So if you want to just fix up there. You okay? <laughs> I just wish. <laughs> no, uh, they'll do it. Just launch it. You tell them to. Yeah, cool. It's about eight minutes long. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to FIRA Day 2. And it's a great way to kick off because we're going to go straight to Argo Intelli. And we're lucky to have the Chief Commercial Officer. It's Jacob Beb from Denmark, who's here. And um, basically, you make some pretty incredible field robots. And I think you're going to show us a video to explain just what you do. So it's over to you. Thank you very much. And good morning, everybody. And thank you to FIRA for hosting this great event. Um, as uh, was stated, I'll show a video lasting approximately eight minutes. Afterwards, I will speak a little bit about our strategy, and then I hope there will be some questions, and I hope also I can answer them. So, um, yeah, in this video, there will be some of my colleagues with some statements. Among them will be Ole Green, the founder of Agrantelli, who unfortunately could not attend in person, but uh, he will appear in this video. So. Um, Please enjoy. We from Agrantelli are proud to present to you Roboti. We are producing and supplying Roboti for farmers around Europe. We are based in Denmark and is based upon uh, multiple years of research and development in collaboration with a lot of research partners around Europe. Roboti is based on the idea that we believe technology can be used for precision farming and automation to help minimizing impact on soil, on environment and for the benefit of the farmer's economy. a new field to the system, the plans needed for that field only has to be made once. After making a plan for a specific implement, it can be reused again and again on that field. This makes it possible to ready all the operations needed for a field in advance and have them available for driving at any time and at any number of times. Roboti, the three-point hitch, it's a perfect solution for precision farming as it offers a lot of possibilities and flexibility for the work as well as for the implements which can be attached. The lack of workforce is a big issue for both farmers as well as for the scientists and it even increased in the last years and therefore a robotic technology is needed to solve this issue. Since 2021, 
Aguentele had offices as well as demo fields in the southern part of Germany, very close to the French border. This setup allows us the possibility to be close to our distributors in the neighboring countries and our final customers. Testing and documentation of Roboti has been an essential part of our development of Roboti to ensure that when Roboti is supplied to our customers, they get a reliable and robust product that can ensure them in an intense business uh, with variating climate conditions where they need to know that the equipment works when the weather is right. Changing climate conditions are requesting everybody in the business to come up with new solutions that can support a sustainable farming practice for the future.
Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> so, um, thanks for that video. Um, so, do send your questions in online or in the hall here. Um, before we go to any questions from you here, we've got one online. Maybe it's a bit provocative. I'm, I'm a big fan of Denmark. I've gone cycling there several times. And I, because it's flat, a lot of it. And I noticed that on the video, the video shows lots of your robots on flat land. So, I guess you're thinking more about that kind of territory. It wouldn't work on hilly territory in Spain or France or Italy? It would. I'll just get back to questions. I would just like to highlight some of the things that we, uh, we saw in the video. Um, I would like to state that uh, the robotic project has been ongoing for, for more than 20 years. It was at some point part of Kongskille, and since uh, 2018, um, Agro has focused 100% on developing this uh, robot, the Roboti, and it has been commercially uh, available and ready since the end of 2019. It hasn't been until uh, earlier this year that we have really started focus on the commercial side of it and bringing the product to the market. Um, you probably noticed in the video that we can drive with a lot of different uh, implements, and that is part of our strategy, to be very um, flexible so that uh, our customers, our distributors, can attach <laughs> different kind of implements so they suit their customers and these customers' specific crops and operations. <clears throat> so, um, so that's our main strategy. <clears throat> As you probably noticed, we have chosen to, uh, to work with uh, diesel engines. A lot of our um, colleagues in the, in the industry have chosen uh, another source of, uh, of power. Um, our strategy has been and is to make it uh, as easy as possible for the farmers to, uh, to offer them a technology that they, are, they, are, they know, that they are familiar with, and that is uh, easy for them to, to service. And uh, speaking of service, that is also something that we like to, to offer to our distribution partners so they can make a, make a business out of it as well, besides just the, the margin they might get on the, on the, on the product itself. Um, but we, we sell through distributors and uh, we have been working very hard this year and will continue to do so to onboard more distributors, uh, primarily in, in Europe, but also in Australia and, and overseas. So, yeah, uh, back to your question. Denmark is indeed pretty flat, but we have uh, robots driving in, in more hilly uh, conditions as well. So uh, I believe we say we can drive up to between 8 and 10 percent um, of, of, of hills, so it is definitely possible, but it really depends also on the soil and uh, what the robot is, is doing. We have a question from Alexander Terrier. What are your plans to address the fact that farming conditions will become harder with climate change? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what, uh, what he means specifically, but uh, as, as Ola also mentioned in the video, we are very much looking into susta sustainability. Uh, the next big thing will be, will be data, where we'll be able to to, to use vision cameras to detect <coughs> the soil conditions, diseases, um, uh, weed, and then, uh, then handle uh, and, and thereby save a lot of uh, chemicals, for instance, in, in spot spraying uh, and so on. So. Any questions in the audience here? Yeah, to this gentleman over here. <coughs> do, do tell us your name and who you represent. <coughs> yeah, good morning. Uh, Peter van der Vlucht from uh, Kubota and uh, AEF. Um, Pleased to meet you. I, I have a question related to how farmers uh, perceive and experience the, uh, the logistics of uh, when you have fields scattered across your farm in the region, let's say, you need to load it up onto, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a truck or a trailer and bring it to the field. So as opposed to tractors and implements, uh, which is relatively easy, you go on the road, you drive your combination to the field. So how, how's the experience from, from farmers and growers in, in setting up the machine and driving it to the fields, actually? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, and it, it can be an annoyance for the, for the farmers. Um, what we see a tendency towards is that the, uh, the farmers that, that does choose uh, this kind of technology, they tend to have larger fields, uh, because then the, then the business case simply makes more sense, because uh, if there is too much um, transportation and logistic issues, then it might uh, kind of ruin the business case. So. Um, so we tend to do that, and then also the, the, the clients tend to have their fields kind of bundled together, uh, and that's the way to avoid those issues, but yeah. 
And that's a good point for me to come in with this question from Rosen Kolev. Do you have a highway certification? Uh, sorry, what? Do you have highway certification? I don't know, to be honest. Okay. I'll get back to him on that one. Okay, I'll get back to you. Uh, we have a gentleman here. Lea? Lea? Uh, good morning, René Kouraj, Future Farming Magazine. Um, I basically have two questions. If I understand well, the Roboti Long Range has one engine instead of the 150D, who, who has two engines, uh, according to my opinion. So I would like to know why you made that choice. I mean, you, you chose two engines for a certain reason, so I'd like to know why you choose one engine right now. Yes, good question. Uh, the reason is that in the 150D, the current model, we had a uh, one Kubota engine for the propulsion, and we had one uh, engine to, to handle the PTO. Uh, we have seen that the majority of our customers do not use the PTO, and thereby that additional engine uh, would uh, be idle uh, the majority of the time. So uh, we have uh, listened to them. And, uh, and then made this long-range version where we have, besides some essential upgrades, we have uh, made it a long-range with an in increased uh, diesel tank. So that's the reason. So the LR has no PTO uh, uh, possibility? No, it has an increased uh, hydraulic system. So some of the implements that, uh, that previously uh, was, uh, was used with the PTO can instead be used with the increased uh, hydraulic capabilities. Second question, if I may. Um, uh, how do farmers plan their, their operations, their fields? Is that in, an, in your, your agrointelli cloud or solution? And is there an import-export possibility for existing, for, uh, for example, for existing field borders, AB lines, etc.? Yes, we have the possibility to, to import their existing uh, um, field maps, uh, but the majority uh, maybe not the majority, 50-50, will, uh, will need um, field maps and then they can use the robotic to do so or they can use other uh, GPS equipment and then import it to the robotic. Any more questions in the hall here? Otherwise, it's the question that keeps coming up um, <laughs> then that speakers don't always address. What's the price of the latest offer that comes from Rosen Kolev? That comes from? Rosen Kolev. Ah, um, the, the price, sorry. How much? For the, for the new LR, uh, it's very competitive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rosen, if you're online, um, you'll talk to each other afterwards, yes. right? Okay. And you'll work out a deal. Um, let's see if we've got any more questions here. Any more from the audience here? It comes in a variety of sizes. Are you open to customers um, being able to fit other applications on it and choose their size specification? Yes, we, uh, we are very flexible. And uh, at the moment, this, the, uh, the smallest robot we have uh, made is uh, one meter and 80, and the largest is uh, three meter and 65. And anything in between is possible, and we can probably also make it a little bit uh, larger and a little bit smaller, so very flexible. Again, just touching the fact that you're in Denmark, you have a lot of intensive farming there, so is that really <clears throat> where you would say you, you probably have a, an advantage of your competitors because you're dealing with, you, know, you have intense farming in a small country? I wouldn't say so. I think uh, our diversity and flexibility is our uh, main advantage, that, uh, that we, are, we are constantly adding use cases to the robotic to adding different kind of implements so that the, the customers can, can get added value to, to the investment uh, as time goes. And the robot can be left in the field or does it need a supervisor after a certain amount of time, obviously, apart from loading and unloading? No, it, it, can, it can operate uh, on its own uh, and, and be left there, yes. How long for? I think you mentioned it over a month. The, the current 150D can, depending on the operation, between 16 and 18 hours and the LR up to uh, 60 hours. So, yeah. Okay. Um, there's other questions coming in, so do get back on. You're here until when? Tomorrow. And tomorrow. So, so if you want to talk to him, Jacob, he's here. He'll also be with me again in about two hours' time as we discuss the future and the energy transitions. We'll have a panel right over there. So join us again with Jacob in just a couple of hours' time. But um, he will be able also to talk to you about the price and doing a good deal. Um, right after this. So let's just give him applause.
Thank you.